black made back white seats, black piping. Remind me of Paul McCartney and Mike fighting. The six too long, the curtains are drawn. Perfectly like a Picasso, Rim Branson. <laughs> you feel that? All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Maybach Conversations. And today we have a special guest, the beautiful Kiana Watson. Hey, How Trey. Are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Very blessed. Very blessed. You, you always come to slay, huh? I mean, that is, it's, it's who I am. It's, it's, it's who I am. It's required, huh? It's a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. So if you guys don't already know who it is, Kiana Watson is the owner, founder of Watson Realty. Uh, CEO, I mean, what's, what's some of the titles? Because I can't even name let, it all. Let me, I have my online training academy, Agent Tools for Success. I own my own real estate brokerage, Watson Realty Co. Um, various other endeavors that I invest in. I invest in development. I invest in uh, real estate. Mm. And most recently, I'm going to launch a business sexy clothing line. Oh, so, really? You know, business sexy? Business sexy. Is that what this is right here? Is Absolutely. This, uh, I, I it's feel given. Like it is. It's given. It's given. <laughs> So look, I just want to congratulate you for everything uh, on your success. Thank you. You're doing an amazing job for a beautiful black woman. I mean, for any woman, you know, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Trey. And we're going to pop a bottle to your success. Let's pop a, let's right. pop a bottle. <laughs> let's get it. And I got to say something while he's doing that. I'm so excited for Trey. I feel like we both came up around the same time. Yeah. Um, and we consistently stayed true to who we were as far as branding, marketing, and so for us to be where we are now, and when people always try to pin people against each other, me and Trey have always had a great relationship. It has always been no competition, just right. us really supporting each other. Right, 100%. So I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate You're that. You're Thank welcome. you. That's amazing. That's amazing to hear. Yeah. But but you really taking it to another level, though, because, I mean, everything just be on point. You know, I, I, I don't have, I'm not doing it to the level you're doing it. I mean, you're, how long have you been an agent? Well, keep in mind, I got my license a long time ago, but I ain't still no houses. I ain't still no house to 2016. Really? Yeah, I got my license in 2007. Oh, Never wow. sold a house. I was in property management. Mm. So, um, like, I used to manage multifamily housing. The largest community I managed was, like, 415 units. Mm. So when I came into um, real estate full-time in 2015, they sold my last property. And okay. so I came in and was like, all right, I closed the deal. And I was like, oh, I like this. Mm. <laughs> and, I, and I kept going from there. So... You got your license in 2007, and you didn't sell a property in 2016. No, yeah, I didn't sell a house. And well, my first closing was actually 2015, September 2015. Really? I remember. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. And and I just saw this year you posted. You already did 14 million in volume for the year. Yeah, you know, that I've is, been working. That, that God is, is good. Crazy. You know, God is good. Look, look, my best numbers for the year for a year is like 19 million. That's amazing, though. That's good, but you are you gonna hit that and beyond? That's well, that's the goal. It really I, comes down to. I remember I was I was saying this a couple of years ago. This mm -hmm. had to be twenty twenty one, and you know we go to these award ceremonies. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's good. That's it's your good. favorite. This is my favorite. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to these award ceremonies, and yeah. we see all these other races winning these big awards, right? They yeah. get, they selling a hundred million, sixty million, right? And I remember, in 2019, I was at like 2019, 2020, I was at the award ceremony, and I was sitting by some an agent. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say their name, but mm -hmm. basically, they. Um, I remember that year, Rod had sold, I think, almost a hundred houses. Oh yeah, I heard of that. And um, the agent was like, "I could never sell that many houses. I'm, I'm just gonna focus on the volume." Mm. So I looked up the agent. I'm like, "Oh, they work with developers. Mm. That's how they get in this volume." Mm. And from there, it clicked. Like, I need to work smarter and not harder. Like, I, I knew I wanted to shift from just always working with buyers. Yeah. It was like time to shift over to working with listings because you're only one person. Right. You only represent so many people in the exactly. field. Exactly. Right. And. Um, I've, I've successfully built those relationships yeah. and that's it's a blessing that is a huge blessing and yeah. that's that's the that's what you want as a real estate agent you want to be working with developers yes. so they can just feed you in exactly but you're doing a phenomenal job thank you i appreciate yeah. that you know how important professional photography and videography is in real estate i take mine very seriously the only company i trust is visually sold and that's visually sold.com they have the best photographers. They've been shooting all of my photography videos for my real estate projects for years. Not only that, they have a next day delivery, instant booking online, and the quality is outstanding. Get your game up today 
and get 10% off your first photo or video shoot by using my code, which is Trey, T-R-E-Y, at visuallysold.com. And that is, again, Trey at visuallysold.com. They will take care of you. Make sure you tell them that I sent you so I can get some future discounts on all of my stuff in the future. All right, guys, visuallysold.com. Check them out. They will not disappoint. One of the most professional services in the business. All right, I guarantee that. Now let's get back so to the show. So let's talk about how did you grow up? Where, where are you from? I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, North <laughs> yes. Carolina. You're a country girl. I'm country. <laughs> okay. I am country. I just tried to post on my page how to say shouty. And as, as everybody said I say it wrong. What's up, shouty? I mm, think I say it right. Yeah, anyway. no, you say it wrong. <laughs> Shout <laughs> Shouty, shouty. Hey, what's up, shouty? You know what I'm saying? I know you don't have the guys holler at you, like, hey, shouty. Hey. What's going on, shouty? <laughs> nah, they probably don't even approach you like that. No, they that. don't. They <laughs> don't. But um, I'm from North Carolina, born and raised. Okay. Um, I went to Fayetteville State University. I went to HBCU. Mm. Um, came to Atlanta in 2006. Okay. I came, I moved here by myself, no friends, no family. Literally, I don't recommend it in this economy. I only had $5,000 saved in a dream. Mm. I didn't even have a job. I mean, that's not bad, though. Yeah. That's not bad, yeah. but but yeah, it's. I had no job, and I came here, but that's when rent was like five fifty a month. Oh yeah, I, I moved <laughs> to this little apartment in Sandy Springs. I remember that. And um, I applied for marketing jobs, and I ended up getting a job like within the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yes, I got this marketing job. I got this degree. I'm thinking I'm gonna be like the people on Boomerang. Y'all remember that movie Boomerang? Yeah, of course. That's she my just, favorite movie. you know, she come out wearing that little outfit. <laughs> Man, I was in the call center. <laughs> just ain't what I thought. Yeah. But I was paying the bills and I was making it through. Mm. And um, I end up like th that's how I got started in Atlanta. Mm. Starting in the call center. First, Starting in the call job. center. Yeah. Got it. Working sales um, call center. It was reconstruction data. We was selling um, construction data to different companies, mm. corporate cor corporation to corporation. Then I worked for City Search. Mm. That I, that was a huge like marketing and sales for like ads and all that. Yeah. And um, I met these girls. I was out and about. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing. It's just like I'm so used to women, and you know this, like especially back in the day. I don't know now. Right. Women used to always have to be in another man's section. Always, it was always with a man. Like it was never like they got their own. But right. I was in this little club. It was called South Beach at the time. Mm -hmm. And I see this woman in their own section, like they Chanel'd up, furred up. I'm like, really? What y'all do? Here, like here in Atlanta? Here in Atlanta? It's called South Beach. It was called South Beach, okay. right off Roswell Road. I was like, what y'all do? It's like we do real estate. And I'm like, hmm. Mm. I think I wanna, I think I wanna do that because mm. they, I don't see no man around. It's just them. Mm. I'm like, I'm gonna get my real estate license. It just hit me like I'm gonna get my license. Mm. So I thought, let me get my license. I'm a pop. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong thought. I'm not realizing how much work go into mm -hmm. it, huh? Mm. So, so, got my license and, you know, didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. Yeah. And the market crashed. You know, the market ended up crashing. Right, because you got in at 07. 07. And it crashed like 08, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. And I went into property management. And mm. so I kind of just let my license go dormant. And I got into property management. I thought I was going to be a regional manager. That's the only reason I ended up getting my master's degree. Okay. Because I was, like, I kept getting these promotions. You got your master's too? Yeah. Congrats. Oh. Wow. <laughs> What haven't you done? <laughs> what haven't I done? So I got into property management. I just knew I was going to be a regional manager. So by the time they got me on my largest property, it was like 400 units. I mm. said, oh, mm. I was on the scale to be a regional manager. That means I can manage like two or three properties at a time. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed property management. It was great while I was there. And, it's right. really, and it really does encompass sales. Yeah, exactly. It really reminds you of the real estate market gotcha yeah everything you're saying is sales so you already knew you were a saleswoman i'm a saleswoman yeah, yeah I, so i'm a sales everything i've done is sales i got it yeah so all right growing up where did you get this drive from like did you grow up poor not poor but humble well, beginning not i don't want to say poor but humble. less humble beginnings or wealthy or middle class what would you no, say we we definitely very humble beginnings like mm. um I'm, I'm the second oldest of six kids okay so my mom married my um stepfather when i was two so she already had three kids and she married him and then she had three more with him he took care of us raised us loved us nice. but was very humble beginnings like uh, we grew up in the projects, and when we upgraded, oh, me too. Yeah, but when we upgraded, when we got Section Eight, okay, you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> right. then we was like, now we got a house, right? So we went from there to having houses, and you know, my dad tried the best that he could. But when yeah. I was, we definitely had humble beginnings. Like we, I've had times where we had no lights. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And my mm -hmm. dad would climb the pole in the middle of the night, turn the lights on, so we can get ready wow. for school. I understand that. Um, you know, it was. It, I never had. I didn't have an example of what. 
I want it to be, but I know I I didn't want to live a live life like that. that. Exactly. Yeah. So that would you say that's what drove you to be who you are today? Absolutely. Is that a big part of your success? That's a huge part of my success because I remember. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I remember just not having even the small things. Yeah. Like going to the book fair and not having. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or starting school and not being able to get those those Jordans, the tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. And so not having was always that like catalyst for me it was like I know they tried the best they can, but yeah. for me, I want more. Yeah. You know. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have similar backgrounds in that area, and that's also what fuels me because I've seen the lifestyle of less humble beginnings growing up, and I just knew I didn't want that for the rest of my life. Exactly. You know, we gotta change. So, what puts you on that path? Like, what? Because when you grow up like that, you know, people around you have that same mentality of you know yeah. being complacent where they are. What? sparked you to change like was it any you know let me let me give y'all some transparency okay i'm an attractive woman i I think i feel like i've always kind of been attractive (laughs) um so with that being said i've i've had relationships and in those relationships even when i was in north carolina i've always been with someone a male that you know took care of things things for Mm, me sugar daddy (laughs) <laughs> I had a couple of sugar, sugar daddies. I, I will say they didn't mind. Okay, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I've always had a male that did not mind doing things for me. I um, even when I was in undergrad at college, like I didn't have any um, like any bills to tuition. I had someone that was paying my tuition. Oh, wow. Um, for that, so it wow. was different for me. Mm. So it helped me to see more. Mm. Um, it helped me to see like oh. There, there is a different life, right? Mm-hmm. Just being an attractive woman, especially at that time, and you know, dealing with older men, they, mm-hmm. they, they, they didn't mind. Yeah. And for me, I was always like, I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna do things. But, you know, to be transparent, I was always kind of like dependent on a man to do things for me. Yeah. It wasn't until I moved to Atlanta mm. that I was like, oh, you got to stop that. Mm. You know, like, okay, girl, you're too smart for this. Yeah. Like, and I can tell you guys what shifted. And I, don't, I really tear this story. I put it in my book. <laughs> uh, when I first moved here, I didn't even, I didn't take, um, like, I was, like, scared to go out. Really? I used to go out when I would visit. Mm. But when I got here, it was just like, this is such a big city. You know, I'm from a small town. Yeah. They, I feel like they're going to eat me alive out here, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I finally went out to do this um, Black Men's Magazine competition. I'll never forget. Really? Yeah. And it was at this club, South Beach. And the reason I keep saying that because that's the time. It was, a, it was a dope club. I went there. And at the time, I met the owner. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the part owners of the, of the club. And so I won the competition. I was, they wanted me to do like fourth place, fly out to New York. Mm-hmm. And the editor in chief, I'm not going to say the person's name, but mm-hmm. everybody would probably, if you're from that era, you know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. He had got my clothing size and all that stuff and was like, hey, I'm going to fly you up to New York. We're going to get you in this magazine spread, this, this, and this. But then he called me and was like, okay, so I'm getting your flight, but you're going to stay in the room with me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. hold a minute. That's hold the setup minute. right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, one thing about it, I, I was green, but I wasn't slow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that don't sound right. Yeah. So I'm like, this guy just met. This was his club. So I called him. He was like, man, I've been trying to tell you. Mm. The girls that you was on stage with, them girls are strippers and da 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 Like, he coming down on me like, mm. so you don't need to do that. If I was you, I wouldn't go do it. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, so my intuition was right. I was like, I ain't doing that. Mm-hmm. And so I met him. And then they see, you know, he start dating me. And then now I'm driving uh, you know, he comes scoop in and start paying bills. And he actually is the person that got my real estate license. When oh, I saw wow. the girls in their own section, mm-hmm. he paid for me to get my real estate license. Um, and we had a, a good relationship. Mm. And subsequently, he ended up um, going to jail for mortgage fraud. He was, um, mm. he did his time. Mm. And um, when he did get locked up, that's when it hit me. Mm. That's when it hit me. And that was, um, I had to be 2000. I would say 2008, mm. 2000, to around 2008, it hit me. I was like, girl, you you're too fun. smart yeah. to always be dependent on other people. Yeah. And that's when I went directly into, I, like, I got a real job. Like, I went and started working into property management. Gotcha. And I got focused because I was this close to moving back to North Carolina. Really? Because wow. the money was running out mm. and the person was gone. And I was, at that point, I had got my real estate mm. license and I was working for that telemarketing company. But once I got in a relationship with him, yeah. I stopped working. Yeah. Obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that changed things for me. It, that shifted my mindset, being that close from just losing the dream of living this big life in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I was like, girl, get a snap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to ask two questions. 
And for girls out there seeking advice or seeking how to be, how to get their own sugar daddy, what kind of advice would you give them to get their own? Because you done had a couple of them, I can see, <laughs> in your day. So, but I think the men be attracted to you because they see you grinding. So yes. they want to invest and pour I, into I you. I feel like it's a different time, right? Yeah, it I is think, a different. I think back. I think back in that time. Yeah. Men didn't. We didn't have social media like that. It was MySpace. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much access to see so many beautiful women. Yeah. So you could be the finest person in the city, like, yeah. or the newest person in the city. And for me, I was like the finest newest person in Atlanta. Mm. And and nobody ain't nobody touched her. Ain't mm. nobody dealt with her. So gotcha. it was like, I'm a, I'm gonna get her now. Like gotcha. you know what I mean? So you gotta be rare. You gotta be. <laughs> you gotta be rare. Okay. And I just feel like you gotta act have uh, like a lot of times when people are beautiful or like nice looking women yeah they have stank attitudes and they brag about it like That's... my attitude is bad mm. I don't think nobody want to deal with that nah. I've always had a great attitude good personality great conversation mm. and I'm and unproblematic mm. you know if that's what you're looking for you got to be um, you really do got to be somebody's piece if you want them to take care of you I'm mm. sorry ladies this is what it is I, I agree with that you 100% know? and um, I think that so at the time and Anytime I've had someone, they just, you know, they didn't they just mind. took care. Okay. Because I was unproblematic and I was a good attitude and I'm good looking. Right. And everything is going right. Right. So, ladies, you'll see what you got to do to have your <laughs> sugar daddy. All right. So, for the ladies who's not worried about the sugar daddy, to get on their grind, what would you suggest? What what path would you tell them to go on to not be dependent of a man and oh, yeah. focus on themselves to get to the bag? I would say the number one thing is you got to figure out what your talents are. So often we see people doing things and we want to do it because we think it's easy because they're doing it. But if you focus on what your true talents are and then leverage those talents Mm -hmm. into a business. And I don't care if you work for Microsoft or you open your own business. Just be good at what you do and be Mm -hmm. passionate about what you do. There you go. You know, I'm a salesperson, so I could sell you know, I could, you know, I'm saying? I could, I could, I could sell, sell, sell ice water to a well. I can sell water to a well. <laughs> right. So I know that's my talent, mm-hmm. right? So I don't go too far away from that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that as women, and I hate, like, oh my gosh, I was just telling Trey earlier, please don't label me the the strong woman. I am. I don't, I don't want to be the strong black woman. Mm. I don't want to be the boss babe. I am a businesswoman by default because I'm smart and I know what I want. Mm. But I want to live an extremely soft and visible life and I'm still bubbly I'm still have that personality because I still desire to have a man what the Mm, hell I understand right I understand do you have um an income requirement for your man you gotta make (laughs) how much money do your man need to make a year Mm. to date Kiana Watson you know because you pulling it in so he gotta be (laughs) you know what would you would you (laughs) would you date Someone who's making less than what you're making or he's got to be at least where you are or he's got to be more. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, you know what? It, it, this, I don't care. I mean, this big age, it is what it is. Mm. I, as a woman, in order for a woman to respect and really look and admire a man, in my opinion, I want you to know more than me, be able to teach me something, and make more than me. Mm. Um, because if you can do those three things, I'm going to always respect and admire you, and it will keep you in your masculine energy. Mm. You know, especially dealing with someone like me. Not only do I make my own money, I'm attractive. Most of the time, I'm around a bunch of men. Mm-hmm. And mo- and I'm I'm visible. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm highly visible, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to be secure in your, who you are. Right. And I want someone that has, they didn't, They don't have to be visible. You can be, first of all, you can be, me and you can be the only people that know you make money, mm. right? But I do want you to be able to be financially secure enough mm-hmm. and mentally in a space where you're not insecure about what I got going on. Got it. Yeah. That's a real man. Yeah. I can agree with that. Because, I mean, think about it. Would mm-hmm. you, like, from your standpoint, mm-hmm. if you're dating a woman, like, ain't, I just don't see you, like, dating a woman, like, <laughs> and it's like, she has nothing. <laughs> nah, I definitely can't deal with that. You know, there's some women out here who just target men as their for their financial security. You know, that's they're investing themselves, their body, and all of that, and their target is going to be a man to take care of them. Times are different now. That, that's right. what I was saying. Right. I, don't, I, I think that, and this is just from my experience, and I, I feel like I'm the I'm the girl's girl, right? I'm the mm. woman's woman. I know all the bad women. Like, they all my friends. They all people I hang with. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing I can say, I know so many gorgeous women that are about their business and mm. financially secure that I think it's going to be harder for those women that don't have anything mm. to compete with that. Of because course. as a man, it's like, I, you may not care that she makes money, but mm-hmm. you care enough to know she's not using me for it. 
Thank you. You know, hundred percent. And that's 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 key. That is key yeah. because when a man, when a man, a successful man, see that a woman is not just after him for his money and she got her own thing going on, he's gonna be more willing to invest into her. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so yeah, ladies. All right, moving right along. Now, any books that you've read that you know, put you in a different mind state or any audio books that you've listened to? Oh, yes. It's, what what's um, some of your top? The, the top two are um, Master Your Emotions. Mm -hmm. and Master Atomic, Your Emotions. Master Your Emotions. And right. so... I, every woman need to read that. And Master Your Emotions <laughs> no. and The 48 Laws of Power. Those are my top really? two. And those are not business books. Those are really mindset books. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you get to a specific place in business mm -hmm. or as a person, you have to master your mindset. That's true. You have to master personal your, development. Oh, personal is development is key. It is key, especially when you're coming from where we're coming from, because you have to change that mentality. The only way to progress in life is to change your mentality and then let the actions follow. Agree. You know what I'm saying? Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Babe. Like change your mentality. <laughs> I had to, I, and I feel like every, maybe every quarter, but mostly every year you shift. Mm -hmm. Every year you change a little bit more because what got you here won't get you there. Mm. So as your goals change, you have to also progress as a person. You're right. You're right. That is key. That's probably one of my little faults. I don't continue to read the books and continue to learn new, new, new knowledge. So that's one of my faults. But That's something you want to, I mean, you got to start investing in. I read a chapter a day from a book. Every day. And I do it every single day, even on vacation. Let me tell you why. Mm. Because where I'm headed mm -hmm. and I know where I want to go, mm -hmm. I can't get there without that personal development. You're right. You know, I have to be able to enrich my mind mm -hmm. and understand that. Because, like, you know what biggest say? More money, more problems. Mm -hmm. The problems get bigger. So you actually mm -hmm. have to be more solutions based. You actually have to have a better mindset. Mm. You know? That's, that's key. Yeah. Wow. That's very profound. I like that. And you know, that's my goal is to read a chapter a day, but sometimes, you know, you just don't do it. Oh, know. You know what? Challenge yourself to read a chapter, two chapters a week. Oh, that's easy. And then when you yeah. do that, you'll end up finishing a book more likely in about two months. Mm. You'll still get there. I like that. I'm going to okay. apply that. All right. Y'all apply that. All right. <clears throat> What's your money goal for the year? Because, I mean, have you already exceeded your money goal or... What what is it? Um, you know, based on the partnerships and things I got, I mean it's a humble goal. Is it? I, <laughs> uh, I feel like it's a I feel like it's a humble goal for what I'm trying to do this year. Yeah. My my, my five year goal is, is much bigger, but this year, humbly speaking, I just want to hit about three point five million. Three point five? Yeah. That's 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 more than humble. But that is a an, a fantastic goal though. I appreciate it. I, I mean I, I know I'm gonna get there with everything I, I do oh man that's amazing so fellas so wait if your goal is three and a half million and a guy gotta be making at least that or more to uh date you right i don't think i don't see a problem with that <laughs> so they if you ain't got three and a half million coming in this year don't talk to you right i just don't see how it would work <laughs> I, and, it, and let me tell you this and and this is being quite honest i right. think men mm -hmm. I know women, and I can be one of those women, like, I'll say, oh, I don't, you know, as long as you make enough to do the things I want. Because mm. I'm a girl's girl, so if you want to if you want to see me, oh, you're going to have to date me. Yeah. I want nice dinners. I like, I want acts of service. I like gifts. I like compliments. I want to be wined and dined. Mm -hmm. That's, that's. Mandatory. Ma it's mandatory. Yes. I'm, like, don't just try to meet me in the corner. Mm. I'm sorry, it's not going to work for me. Because yeah. I, me and my friends, we already, we doing thousand dollar lunches. Mm. in the middle of the week mm. on a random Tuesday. So if you, you know, and I'm not trying, that's just how I worked hard for this, right? Pop your shit. So don't come around <laughs> me trying to like dilute. So I say that to say, if a person is not secure or making the money they want to make, yeah. how I don't see how we're going to be able to date the way I want to date, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and do the things I want to do. So what if you get one, somebody that's making, let's say about two to 300,000 a year? Could you possibly upgrade him to where he can be somewhere near your level? Would you invest in a man to, like, you could see potential in him and be like, all right, you know what? I, I can tell I, you got it. Would I'm, you take any time to invest in him to I've, okay. help him achieve those Let's just goals? open this door. Okay. I just got out of a 
15 year relationship, a 10 year marriage. Oh wow. And where I am at this big age, I just want you to come already potential because I do. Mm. I'm already potential. You mm -hmm. You're not meeting me at the beginning of my career in grind season. You're meeting me where I am just scaling and building. Yes. And I have the time, the availability, the mindset to still cater to a man, cook for you, take care of you, all those things, go out with you, do all those things. Mm. I want a man to come to me the same way. Mm. Be already potential for me. Yeah. I'm, 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 I just, I, I'm not in my 20s, so I, I, I don't want to build you up. I want you to be built. I can understand that. I'm not asking you to build me. I hear that. So you will get back into it. Will you marry again? Absolutely. Another thing I, I love, love. I mm. love marriage. It is like such a beautiful thing to be with somebody yeah. that you know has your back and you have their back. Yeah. Because the world, to me, can get so vicious and superficial. Yeah. And it's hard to see who's who. So when you've got somebody that you know love you, mm -hmm. That's the most beautiful thing. So I can see myself getting in another relationship. I can see myself getting married again. Mm. I am not like turned off from the idea of marriage and love. Okay. Um, I've learned a lot from my last relationship. Yeah. And the, the, the best thing I've learned is as you ascend and you grow, that's why I just want someone that's already there. Mm -hmm. Because what ha this, is what, this is what I feel like happened. When my husband met me one way, that was 15 years ago, right? Yeah. Managing apartment communities. You see, and you've watched me grow and build and ascend, mm -hmm. but you can only remember me that that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so for most men, it's hard to watch a woman or see a woman, mm -hmm. especially your woman, mm -hmm. grow like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what started our problems. It wasn't, wow. that's what started the issues with us. Really? It was the ascent. I was ascending at a rate that was like so fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just catapulted, right? But, but wouldn't he be happy for you though? I, right? I feel like you, as men, I feel like I, I still to this day, like we're still cordial. We're still, I would, friends is such a loose term. Mm -hmm. But we get along, okay. <laughs> right? Well, that's good. That's um, good. And I'll say, um, he was happy for me. Mm -hmm. So it's not like someone can't be happy for you. He yeah. was happy for me. Yeah. But at the same time, certain things just shifted how he felt, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, through conversation with him, we went, we tried therapy. We did all this stuff. It's yeah. just like, that's why I do know as a man, mm -hmm. you want to have more than your woman because you're going to always want your woman to look up to you. Mm -hmm. So you can always feel like you're that person. Because mm -hmm. every time someone says, I've just watched the story happen over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, I could have not been successful and I feel like I would still have my marriage. Mm -hmm. I could have just not been, I just would have, if I would not have explored these God given talents, mm -hmm. right? I feel like I know I would still have my marriage. Because mm, you would have still been more so in control or yes. the breadwinner. He would have still been the breadwinner mm. and it would have still been it wouldn't have been that ascension and then that publicity and you got the public eye on you and all those things. It wouldn't have been all those things. But there's not one regret I have in my marriage. That's why yeah. I, I think I still feel like I would love to be married again, but I just know I know the what happened there. I don't want that to happen again. So yeah. I want someone that's where I am. Yeah. Like I already know what you want to do. It's one thing to add another business or here and there. Yeah. But if you're like in the grind season, I'm just getting started. I'm investing in this app, and I'm about to be rich in two years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't want that. I got you. No. What do you feel <clears throat> is your true purpose? What do you think your purpose is on this earth? I've accepted that it's not just selling real estate. I thought at first I thought I was just, you know, I yeah. stick to real estate. That's all I want to do. Right. But I feel like my purpose on this earth is to be representation. Mm. Um, let's be, let's, let me, let me give you guys a couple things. My name is Kiana Watson. Okay. It's <laughs> such a, such an urban name. <laughs> It's not that bad. I, Keanu, it's not that bad. No, it's, yeah, but it's urban. It's a cute name. It's a cute name. Yeah. I'm, I'm brown skin. I'm dark skin, right? Mm -hmm. And I have an influence over women and people that they want to be better women, mm. better business women, better overall women. I got women now all wanting to go to Pilates. They want to take better care of their skin, better care of their health. And so I realized that my, my like purpose is representation. Mm. You set the tone. Yeah. You set the tone pretty high. Yeah. But you, you, you know, you, you don't come to play. You slay. I haven't seen a, a, a day where you missed yet. Like, I mean, I know your closet is ridiculous. I, listen, <laughs> I tell people right now, I, all I do is dress and rest, right? <laughs> but really, I love to dress. Like, that's yeah. one thing. But I got that from my mom. 
Okay. Let me tell you, my mom is worse than me. Like, product really? junkie, get dressed for the day. She would iron, like, she has six kids, and she would literally every Sunday do our hair mm. and iron every outfit for the week. So we would have seven ironed outfits in the closet for the week. Get out of here. So, listen. So my mom was like that. So I can't help but be yeah. the way I am. I take pride in my appearance. I feel like... You know, my favorite quote from Deion Sanders, when you look good, you feel good. When you mm-hmm. feel good, you do good. And when mm. you do good, you make money. Mm. And I think a lot of women underestimate the what comes with that. Like, yeah. The amount of confidence and pride you get when you know you've taken the time to, you know, show up. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's 100% true because when you feel, when you're putting it on, when you're putting that shit on. Yeah, you were saying, you know you're know what 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 putting that shit on. <laughs> <You feel? laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel, and it, it, it affects the way you feel about your, yourself. Your day goes better. Like I, I like when I put on a suit, and you just, as a man, you get so much more respect when you walk yes. through the doors. Oh, oh, you can walk up to any woman. A woman's gonna respect you in a suit. The the men are gonna respect you in a, in a yes. suit when you ran it the right way. So I can agree to that. Yeah, you have to just. So the representation is what I feel like I'm here for. So that's why I'm doing more conversations, like sharing my mindset outside of just real estate, like gotcha. about just being a woman in general, mm-hmm. like and, and being a good woman. Of course. You know? I, I like that. I like that. All right. So we pretty much got a lot of the business topics uh, down. We were actually going to discuss your relationship status, which we already been talking about. So you are single. I'm single. Ready to mingle. Mingling. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that like I'm single and mingling. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those things, right? I thought, so I was so, so crazy. You know, you go through divorce and you start thinking, I don't want to date. I just want to be by myself and go on this healing journey. Mm-hmm. And I'm in therapy and it's like, well, girl, you only get this one life. Yeah. So, you know, as you heal and as you go through your process, it's good to entertain and go out and get around different male energy. Mm-hmm. And what I've recognized is like, I, I enjoy being around men. Like mm. I enjoy that date that, Oh my God, you look so beautiful tonight. That conversation. Mm-hmm. I want to get to know what I like. Mm-hmm. I was in such a long relationship. I need to date. I need to understand what I'm looking for. Yeah. And so I and I feel like when I find it, yeah. I'll know. Yeah. You know? Of course. All right. So single dating. Yeah. Um, what are some of your deal breakers and deal makers? Ooh. Mm-hmm. So a deal breaker to me is a man that starts off. I call it, I looked it up on um, on TikTok, because you guys get it. Keep in mind, I'm new, I, I, I'm really new to the dating world, right? So mm-hmm. I be like trying to really get all the info. Right. Breadcrumbing, right? Have you bread heard crumbing. of breadcrumbing? No, so basically, bread it's like when a penny man, pinching. penny pinching, breadcrumbing, or what is it like, basically they start off really strong. Good morning, beautiful, good morning, beautiful. Like you the most finest, gorgeous, beautiful thing on this earth. Mm. They plan an elaborate dates. you get flowers, mm. you get gifts, everything is going well. Then it like, trickles down a little bit mm. now you instead of texting me every morning you text me every other morning mm. and now instead of just elaborate dates it's like oh let's just go to lunch in the middle of the day you know and then mm. it kind of trickles down trickle down that's a deal breaker for me mm. don't start what you can't finish um i feel like i'm such a value woman mm-hmm. and that's all around like and that's keeping it real i can cook and really cook because i'm from north carolina and i'm second oldest of six kids i've been cooking since i was 12. Damn. um I can clean. Mm-hmm. I'm a businesswoman. I'm your number one supporter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to always speak life into anybody I'm dating. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to have like that dynamic where whatever you're doing, I want to support it. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to you and speak life into you. So at the same time, like don't undervalue me. Mm-hmm. You know, don't try to start off high and then figure out, like, let me get lower and lower because typically you're dating multiple people and you can't figure out how to balance it. Yeah. So if I find that's happening, I just, um, I eliminate myself from the roster. Mm, so they got to keep it up. Got to keep it Whatever up. Whatever they're doing in the beginning, don't slack. Don't slack. Ever. Don't slack. Because, I, I mean, I, in this point in, in my life, I, I don't, I don't have to do, I don't have to settle for this. Exactly. People keep saying there's pee in the dating pool. I just have, my water is clear. <laughs> the, the pool that I, the pool of people that are, yeah. that, that desire to date me, mm. um, they all are financially secure. Mm-hmm. They're all attractive and um, smart and driven. So I don't have to. You say. just got your choice. I have an option. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so we yeah. got the deal breaker. That's the deal breaker. What about the deal maker? The deal maker is someone that's consistent. Okay. Um, consistent in conversation. Mm. Um, getting to know me beyond the physical. I understand that men are physical beings. I get it. Women are too. But mm-hmm. at some point, you have to get to know a person like what? 
do I even like what do I think mm -hmm. <laughs> during the day right mm -hmm. um a, a person that wants to date me like go like I want someone that goes out their way I love flowers mm -hmm. I want acts of service I want gifts I want, like when you think about the five love languages I want all that all shit. of it I everything want all that shit gotcha. because I can give all that mm -hmm. you know what I mean that's one thing that that's the good thing about dating a woman that's financially secure and mentally stable. It's like, oh, you want to do something nice for me? I'm going to do something nice for you in return. Mm. Like, it's going to be some give and take here. So I, I like, like that. Like, that's a deal maker for me. Someone that's consistent, that truly has intention. Mm -hmm. I don't think that men recognize that women, we can really, we can tell when you have no intention. Mm. And that's why we disappear. Mm. When most people that value themselves will disappear. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I can agree. Because, you, like, you know, like, let's say you yeah. want, you like a woman and you think she's attractive and you go hard at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get around her and then somehow, some way, you meet somebody else. <laughs> and then you decide that th your attention for person A is yeah. different than your attention for person B. Yeah. So you give them less attention, but you still want them around. Yeah. See, I'm the type of person, I, I'm not going to be around. I know me. I'm a one draw. So, look, how do you choose because... You got all these options. I mean, I know you got at least 50 to 100 <laughs> options. DM blow, blowing up. As a man, you know, I have a lot of options. How do you choose which one you're going to take serious? Because, you know, you got to you gotta talk on the phone with them. Listen. You know, we already busy with business. Yes. So you got to talk on the phone. You got to go on dates. And then for men, it's even worse because we supposed to apply pressure. Y'all just sit back. <laughs> If he don't call me, forget him. You know, that's so one now, thing. I said, I don't move like that. Really? I Like, if you apply some pressure, I'm going to apply pressure back because I want okay. if, I, if I like you. Okay. But I think for women, we have to be way more careful than men, right? Mm. I hate to say it, but I feel like for me specifically, and I think it's because I know it's because I'm new on the market. Mm -hmm. So, one, y'all been watching me for years, right? So, you've been watching me for years. The girl been married. You know, might have peeped me at an event somewhere. Like, oh. And now, I'm in a space where it's like, yeah, you know, is it, the dresses are getting a little shorter. <laughs> I've seen the, that. The, the outfits are getting a little okay, tighter. Okay, thighs. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, right. working out. I'm, I'm in Pilates three times a week. I'm not working out for nothing. I see you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm more confident. I'm, I feel like when I was married, I, I was always confident, but I didn't want... I didn't want to cause excessive issues, so I was definitely more modest. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, I'm, I'm I already know I'm married. I'm not trying to attract anybody beyond yeah. what the normal is. Yeah. But now I'm not. Mm -hmm. And um, but as women, we have to be made way more selective mm. because I think some people just want to be the first. Mm. Let me see the first to get with her, the first to say I got with her because you know now I'm this person. This is Keanu Watson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She mm -hmm. sells these houses. We would look up to her. Mm -hmm. So men also like stuff like that. Of what course. I'm realizing. Of course. So where yeah. I'm at now is like I'm I'm dating, but. I'm quickly eliminating who I feel like don't have doesn't have intentions. Mm. And I'm not saying marry me tomorrow, but you should have some type of intention to consistently date me, to get to know me beyond um, the sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the minute that I feel like you that runs out, because with men, y'all can only keep it up for so long, mm. especially when sex is not involved. Mm. Y'all can only keep it up for so long. Mm. And, yeah. and you eliminate yourself. Well, you know what? Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> so, so how long would you, do you have a time period that you would make a man wait till you be intimate with him or is it yeah. just when, feel, it's, when it feels right? I feel like it's a mixture of both. It's, it's definitely not going to be, I met you on Monday, we sleeping together Tuesday. That doesn't work. Okay. That, that, that just, don't, that don't work for me. Right, like, right. It, you know, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but I do feel like once we get to know each other, right, we get to know each other, we're having a lot of dates and you have intention and you show intent mm -hmm. and you are like doing the things that make me feel special, mm -hmm. then the door is open for that. Gotcha. Right? And, th and that typically takes a, a couple months. Like it's no, that doesn't happen overnight. Wow. Fellas, be ready. You got your work cut out. <laughs> you got your work cut out for you, baby. I ain't like, mad at I, you. Because <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. This is the thing. I think that. And I, that's why when I was, I've done the podcast first, I was like, what's your word of the year? I said, it's value. Mm. When you value yourself, mm -hmm. I think it forces people to value you back. That's true. Right? That and is it's, true. And it's like, I feel like most men, now, this is no, this is no shade to my ex-husband. Yeah. But I do be like, man, I'm single as a married man out here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and I say that. Single as a married man? I, not all married men, but and let, me, and let me just say this in a joking way. I got you. Basically, 
<laughs> I do feel like men have a lot of options, and yeah. unfortunately, there are a lot of women. Yeah. That y'all outnumber us. Don't value us. Mm. And so, because it are, it's a lot of women that don't value themselves. So they allow themselves, or if they choose to, they just want to have sex with men. Like they don't care about having anything else. Mm. So as a man, you have someone to release with. Yeah. So you don't have to put that energy on someone that you're really interested in, if you get what I'm saying. I see what you're saying. So you can use your time there, because yeah. I, I do feel like dating, especially with men, that's what they do. Yeah. But if there's someone you have intentions with, be patient with them. Show them that you value their time. Show them that you value them as a person. Mm. And show them that you have intentions beyond just trying to have sex with them. Maybe mm. have intentions of, maybe, I just want intentions of having a good fun situationship yeah. but I want to make sure that anytime you're around me anytime you're in my presence you feel special and valued mm, I like and I that. think that's where men mess up sometimes they just fall off mm. because you're too busy like because that means you've never had any intention yeah but you know also it's, it's, it's easy to have sex nowadays with women you know you don't have to wait that long I know you've been married for a while but <laughs> <That's the laughs> you problem. know it's it's it's, it's I don't know if it's my experience, but it's <laughs> no. Nah, I ain't gonna just say me. I know it's fairly. I don't think it's just your experience. Yeah. You know, Trey. You know, people say things. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mind. Not... You know, one thing about right. me, I mind my business. Right. Right. I've been minding my business. You know what? <laughs> you know, the girls just throw themselves at me sometimes. You know, and then what? Who am I to deny I, them? Right. I deny a lot. Don't get me wrong. I deny a lot. But it's so many beautiful women out here. It's kind of tough as a single man that's straight to you know anyway that let me, no i'm yeah. glad you touched on that because okay. i say that I, I do feel like i was telling my um my friend this my girlfriend this i was like you know i get how men feel now yeah because i have so many men that come at me mm -hmm. and everybody's different everybody has different personalities so you're talking to them you're texting to them mm -hmm. and it's like you may not even have a favorite mm -hmm. everybody could just be like i like all of them mm -hmm. right but the difference between men and women we're not sleeping with all of them mm. Cause ain't no way, mm. not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. So mm -hmm. don't, you you just, don't <laughs> do not worry about it. If you feel like you took me to a five star dining restaurant and sex comes right after that, don't even take me out. Don't mm. even, don't even ask me. Don't even worry about it. Cause it's not that deep. I understand. I do I, I do want someone. I do desire to have someone that has intentions. Like of course I've come out of a long relationship. I'm not looking to be like oh now you my man. Mm -hmm. But I do want respect and I do want to feel valued. And I do want someone that has intentions of, I want to get to know this woman. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Well, that's amazing. Well, I want to touch on uh, back in real estate, because I know a lot of real estate agents going to watch this show since we both agents. You're a broker. What are some of your, what are some of your do's and don'ts? Or actually, what are something, some things that you love about real estate? And what do you dislike about real estate? Ooh. Because I know, I know it's some. Oh, <laughs> matter of fact, let's touch on dislike let first. Me start, <laughs> you know, the dislike I have about real estate is I feel like we are scrutinized, mm. um, especially minority agents, right? Mm. It's almost like we can't have a life a mm. real life mm -hmm. and be smart enough to run our business at the same time mm. and i feel like that happens at the beginning of your career you start trying to keep this mask on about who i am as a person because you don't want people to know oh i am sexy mm. like even the other week i had to tell somebody i've been fine mm -hmm. i just i didn't just become fine <laughs> right right i've right. been fine for a long time i was just wearing blazers and oversized suits mm. to make you guys feel comfortable <laughs> and now i'm at a place i just don't care mm -hmm. i don't care because i have clients that respect my business mind gotcha more. they don't care about that gotcha you know, gotcha. and I think that um, I think that's one of my pet peeves. And I feel like with real estate, too, it is such a it doesn't stop. Right. So yeah. everybody, everybody wants their emergency to be an emergency, whether it's 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, nine o'clock in the morning while you're at church. <laughs> and it's like sometimes it's just not. Yeah. And I've learned to control like I'm like, this is my I'm not going to sacrifice me mm -hmm, for you. Mm -hmm. I did that a lot in early in my career. Yep. And I end up having like a panic attack. Yeah. It can burn you it out. It burn you out. Man. So that's one of the things I hate about real estate is that people look at it like they get paid this amount, so we're going to drag them to the mm -hmm. ground. It's like, no, we're, get, we're getting paid to provide a service and a great service, but there has to be respect and boundaries mm -hmm. for our personal lives. We have family. Mm -hmm. You know, we have hobbies. We have things that we enjoy to do, and we should be able to do those things exactly. at our leisure while still running our business. 100%. Yeah. I agree. So your, your dues, your likes about real estate is, did we talk about that already? Not yet. 
All right, so, I love the time. Mm-hmm. I because when I think about how I've built my business, mm-hmm. I could be anywhere. I have been. I was on a. I was in Italy negotiating deals. I've been to San Tropez on the beach, mm-hmm. relaxing, just mm-hmm. pick up a call and just negotiate a deal because my team is in the field. Yeah. I Don't love, you get a high from that? Yes, because it's like you know. I feel like I was like, dang, I built something so solid. Yeah. That my that I created something so amazing that I can truly live my best life mm-hmm. and still make the money I want to make and serve my clients. Mm. That's the best part about real estate. You agree? Ah, uh, hundred percent, definitely Cheers agree. Mister Miami, I'm gonna <laughs> call you when I come to Miami. Come too. on, I got you. I'm I want to go outside. To the, oh, oh we I want to go to the I want to go to the to the off the gram outside. That you be doing. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I'm going to put the phone down. <laughs> I got you. But, yeah, Miami is definitely a vibe. Um, as far as real estate, I love the checks. You know, I love interacting with new people. Yes. I just hate when I just hate when people are wasting your time. Why do so many people Ooh. waste your time knowing that they ain't right and they ain't Not trying ready. to do right? You know, That's the and, part they don't see. They see us closing the big deals. They don't see. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you one story, y'all. This is y'all. Y'all is going to blow y'all mind. Mm. This company, this, this guy, they flew in town. This was a year and a half ago. I'll never forget. Mm. And him and his wife came in town to go look at houses, all $4 million plus houses. Mm. They sent proof of funds. Mm. My team verified it. Literally hired a black car service. They insisted on a black car service. Mm-mm. I hired a black car service, went and showed them four houses, took them to Ruth's Chris that same evening, had a big meal. My, the bill might have been $400 mm-hmm. for all of us, mm. all of that. And then the next day, something just didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I talked to my team member, Selena, shout out to Selena, and I said, <laughs> let me see the proof of funds one more time. Mm-hmm. And then I looked through that bank statement. I said, these are fake. Mm. These are fake bank statements. And so I reached out to them and I called them out. The numbers didn't add up. Of mm. course, if you're not experienced, you wouldn't have caught it, but I caught it. But mm. I let her just do that. I said, these are fake bank statements. You guys came in town literally just to waste my time. Mm. A whole six hour day, mm. black car service. So I've invested a thousand dollars in this day and nothing could ever come of it because these bank statements are fake. I don't, I don't understand. I had somebody do me like that too. People just, <laughs> people will do things. And mm-hmm. That's why I started to actually create different systems. Mm-hmm. They don't see that, that, that happening. Yeah. And it's just like, it's unfortunate because people will waste your time just to go look at luxury houses that they cannot afford. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. All right, so I, that's crazy. I, I got so many stories on that. We ain't even gonna touch on that. Because <laughs> we both look. Because like, man, we look at this. Because <laughs> <laughs> these people be crazy, man. But all right, so I know you get asked this question all the time. As a real estate agent, how do you get into the luxury luxury market? How do you get the million dollar deals, the multi million dollar deals? Do they just fall in your lap, no. or or? I just- I mean, I got to tell y'all the truth. And I always I always use you as an example. I use yeah. me and you both as an example. <laughs> I feel like before we were closing million-dollar deals, we positioned ourselves mm-hmm. to be in the presence of million-dollar deals. Mm. So sometimes it's not what you do, it's how you make it look. Mm. Because this is still marketing and branding. Right? Mm, that's and true. So, and you got to sell yourself And you got to sell yourself. Mm-hmm. And so then you wouldn't catch me without a three-piece suit. You mm. know what I'm saying? You wouldn't catch me, and I'm going to everybody's luxury broker open. Really? Anybody anybody that will let me in because I'm going to post about mm-hmm. your million dollar house mm-hmm. because what people perceive, what they see is what they deem to be true. Right. I right. why this phone keep going so I, feel, so I feel like if you are looking to grow into luxury, the first thing you need to do is start being around it. Yeah. And I took so many classes. I took the certified home luxury luxury um, class. I've done so many classes to learn more about the language of luxury. Mm-hmm. So I can understand the difference between porcelain and leather marble and marble and, you know, imported marble. Like, you've mm-hmm. got to understand these things. And mm-hmm. then I feel like network. you gotta, yeah. you got to grow your network of people. you got to get around the right people, right? Yeah. I, and I just feel like it now is not... I feel like it was harder then than it is now for people because mm. there's so many it's, networking events going on now. Yep, yep. And when people, when you position yourself to be around affluent people, people that are making money and they respect you mm-hmm. and they see that you do your work, you'll start getting those clients. Exactly. I 100% agree. And you got to know what you're talking about. You got to be knowledgeable. Yeah. Because a person that's, you get a client that done bought five or six houses and they know more than you know. It's, it's a problem. It's, it's, they, it's over with you. Yeah. Be knowledgeable and then also be a, like, make sure you're focused on giving service. Yeah. I think so often we, like, you can't be focused on the check. You can't have commission breath. Yeah. You actually got to serve your client's best interest. And I think having that mixture of both along with being in the right rooms and having the right 
alignment yeah. help. Yeah. And I and and, and I, I gotta say it because don't be no hater. I'm like telling you. a lot of times y'all be out here <laughs> hating on the same people you should be learning from. Exactly. And I think that you get mad because you're not getting the results from the work you didn't do or the alignment or the relationships you did not build. And then, you know, I hear this about me all the time. I don't know about you. It's just like, oh, she only got that because she was with Ernie Leisure. Mm. Only she only got that. Well, you should have did it. Mm. Who told you? So so don't be mad at me for opportunities that came my way that I absolutely cap, like used and capitalized mm-hmm. on. Because that's what's called what? Marketing exactly. and branding. But you know, people that think like that, they can never achieve true success to a high level because their karma is going to come back on them from their talking about you all the people going to be talking about them because yes. if you putting that out there, that's the same energy you putting back on yourself. Let me tell you, I tell yeah. people one thing about this industry, nobody will ever tell you I don't hate on nobody mm-hmm. and I don't wait on nobody. Mm-hmm. And I have never, I entered, this, entered the industry with such a clean mind and I recognize that every agent has their own gifts. Yeah. So when I see you doing something big, I'm going to be the first to comment, the first to call you out. Yeah. You know, I was on a podcast with Neo, he mentioned, I was like, oh yeah, that Trey is my guy. Right, people love to try to pit us against each other and I don't even know why. That's they don't even know we cool as hell. Right. Like, there's no why. I, it, everybody has their own gift. Yeah, exactly. And when you do, and if you just focus on your own greatness and really, really congratulate people. Yeah. I think I feel like it will be such a better world for you. Yeah. As an agent, you know. I 100 percent agree. So I I got a question. We're almost done. How many How many minutes we on, Evan? Fifty. Okay, cool. All right, so I got a question for you. I get asked all the time, why I haven't opened my own brokerage? Why haven't I started my own brokerage? For me, I, when we dealing with our clients, that's a lot to deal with in itself, <laughs> yeah. you know, with all those people we talk to. So I didn't really want to start a brokerage and having to deal with all these new agents. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to come to you with a thousand questions. Mm-hmm. How did you transition from being a real estate agent and a broker to open your own broker like what are some of the things that you do like about it or do love about it and what are the, some of the things that you don't like oh let me tell you now okay. so and let me let me just start with this by saying i don't think i personally don't think you have to start a brokerage to be great i opened my own brokerage because i was with the company at the time mm. i was with compass and mm. then the pandemic happened and i looked at my numbers and i just had so much market share mm. and i wasn't using their systems i was using my own back end systems mm. i had created my own back end i showed you my back end mm-hmm. yeah, and did. most people when they see it they're like oh shit now i see why she run <laughs> like like it's, right. it, it I, I i operate like a person that has a master's degree mm. right mm-hmm. and so because of that I opened my brokerage, but when I opened it, it was just for me and the three agents I had it was me, Kiara, Bree, and then I added Ariane. I wasn't even interested in scaling because mm. I make enough to run the brokerage. Gotcha, right? gotcha. And then I said, I'm going to scale. Mm-hmm. And I went to scale the brokerage. I ended up, I, at one point, I had 60 agents. Really? And um, what I recognized is the profit. The profit margin in owning a brokerage is only as great either you're small or you're huge. Mm. When you're in the middle, mm. there's no profit, mm. right? Because most 20% of the agents do 80% of the work. Okay. Right? 20% of the agents. 20% of the agents do 80% of the work. Okay. Even in Atlanta, when someone mentions names, who are they going to mention? Me. Mm-hmm. Black agents. Me. You. Brandy Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Keisha Johnson. Like, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, a, it's a couple of names. Mm-hmm. Tammy Sales Atlanta. Um, Miko. Like, there's only, like, a handful Ariane like Bree, Kira, mm-hmm. there's going to be Kira, like a, t- yeah. a good t- Kira. Like there's going to be a good 10 mm-hmm. black agents mm-hmm. that they mention. Yeah. Because we they know, oh, they operate at a high level mm-hmm. consistently. Right. Mm-hmm. And I say that to say the same thing applies to a brokerage. So I open my brokerage with that intent and now I'm down to 20 agents mm. and I'm not hiring. The mm. doors are not open. Mm. And I'm in a place now where I recognize that I want to do more with less. Mm-hmm. I have enough market share. I have the best development relationships. Um, I have the best relationships with my, um, like my companies, like the Halls Law Firm, um, Assertive Mortgage, they come in and they do their, their marketing partnerships with me. Mm -hmm. And so my company, I realized I like it small. Mm. And now where we are, if someone leaves, it would be down to 19. So Mm. it's 18 Mm. and there, and I have the, my top producing agents are my team leaders, Mm -hmm. Bree, Kiara and Ariane. Gotcha. And so they run their teams, mm-hmm. and then I run my team, and we have a profitable business model. Got it. So when you're thinking about opening a brokerage, you have to remind yourself 
as a minority on brokerage, you can't be like Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. You know how many people have never met Keller? Yeah, right. They ain't gonna, I, they I never, never met him. And I've made him money consistently for the past but, six, but, seven but years. But because I'm Kiana, guess what they want to do? Meet me. I do my own sales meetings. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Kiana, I want to have a meeting one-on-one -on -one with you. Mm -hmm. That You just can't run away from it. Yeah. And so for me, opening my brokerage makes sense because of the market share I have in Atlanta. Gotcha. Why do you think I'm not trying to go to other cities? Mm. I have so much market share in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I were, do you, it took me years to build this. Yeah. I don't have years to build it somewhere else. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. So I think when you consider opening a brokerage, make sure you understand that you, if you have the market share first. Gotcha. Because I have the support here. Got it. Um, and then from having the market share, then you leverage that and you say, you know what, I can control these expenses and I got these top producers that are going to come with me and mm -hmm. keep pouring into my company and I'm going to keep it. Mm -hmm. But if I, and I'll tell you this, if I was you, mm -hmm. focus on a team. A team is more profitable. My team makes me more money than my brokerage. Really? Yes. You know, I started a team, but I don't, I'm. No, when I say a team, I mean a support team. Okay. Gotcha. A support team, a team to support what you have going on in exchange for them supporting you. Mm -hmm. You support them in mm -hmm. their deals. Mm -hmm. Not the typical team model. Gotcha. A support team. Gotcha. Trust me, it's the difference. I gotcha. <laughs> Lesson learned. So we, we've pretty much gotten everything we needed from you today. Now, I like to leave every podcast on a positive note. So not just for real estate agents, for, for everyone, what type of life advice for someone Say it's a little girl out there that want to be successful like you or, you know, another woman that want to be successful like you. And she may not be an agent. She may just be in school or something. What kind of life advice would you give someone? I would say the life advice I want to give you is always enrich yourself. Like, make sure that financially that you start understanding your goals financially. Whoever you want to become, whatever woman you want to be, start operating and moving and talking and walking mm. and being like what you vision yourself to be. Mm. Um, you can't have high level conversation with a low level mentality. Mm. So make sure you focus on having that and then you get someone that you can look up to. Have some type of mentorship. I like to call them like your OGs, like Lisa Robinson. She had the Robinson Group. She sold millions and millions of dollars in real estate. She's one of the one of the people I look up to, mm. um, Keisha Johnson, another person I look up to. You got to have someone that is more knowledgeable than you, that's more experienced than you. You got to have that in this world to succeed. So even if that's me, then watch what I do. If mm. you don't want to invest in like a training group, at least mimic what you see successful people doing. Mm. And um, the biggest thing is just know that you're worth it today and you're worth it tomorrow, you've been worth it. And that's one thing you gotta realize in personal and in business. Um, when you value yourself, you force other people to value you. Mm -hmm. And um, there's life after. Mm -hmm. I was in a very long relationship and I think that people are surprised like, about how they feel like I bounced back. It's not that I bounced back, it's just that I understand my value and my worth. I love my ex-husband to death, I still love him. Um, but I also know who I am and what I deserve. Mm -hmm. And when you value and you actually know that you are worthy of des you're deserving of whatever that is in this world, mm -hmm. you move differently. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to let nobody come around me and treat me any kind of way. Mm -hmm. I don't even treat myself like that. Right. You know? Right. Wow. Well, that's amazing. From the beautiful Kiana Watson. It's been a pleasure it's having you on this pleasure. show. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. <laughs> And uh, this has been another episode of Maybach Conversations. Thank you all for tuning in. Oh, tell the people how can they follow you or get in contact with you. Oh, yes. You. Go to Kiana Watson. Everything is Kiana Watson. Go to KianaWatson.com. Kiana Watson on Instagram. Find out about my online training academy, Agent Tools for Success. And uh, make sure you keep up with me so you can get, you know, be a part of the sexy business wear line. I'm telling you. Matter <laughs> do you got any tips on how to dress? Like, are you putting the classes together on that? I, do I need to? You should. Because <laughs> you, <laughs> you take it to another level. I feel baby. like you got to dress for your body type, too. Mm. I think a lot of women dress for the type they want and not the type they have. Damn. And, and you got to do that. No shots because, fired. And I'm not trying to shoot any shots, <laughs> right. but I have been focusing more on, you know, can I say this? Right. An unfiltered life. Okay. Let me say this. Okay. And that means for your vibe, the way you look and all that stuff. We got all these apps. You got AI that can just dress you up, right? Mm-hmm. But when you go out in real life, mm -hmm. in real person, mm -hmm. people, we're not getting an AI version of you. We're getting the real version of you, and that's your physical appearance and your attitude. Mm. Work on both of those. Mm. 
and you'll you'll actually feel better about yourself. There it is. Y'all heard it from the boss lady <laughs> yourself, herself. Uh, well, I'm gonna say that again. There it is. Y'all heard it from the boss lady herself, Kiana. It's been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate all the knowledge and Thank gems you. you dropped. So we're gonna bring you back to your little rich office. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's beautiful. It. You did a great job Thank in there too. Thank you. I appreciate you it. You got a very you need to, great you need place. to close with the halls off or you close at my office. I mean, you got oh, you got halls you got halls with you now. Yeah. So I, I you they know got what? a whole office in here. I closed with halls before, but they was all the way out in like Oh no, you can come here. They don't can't. All you right, come perfect. Here. All right, so schedule your closes here. You got you know, a big deal. You know deals. I'm a show support. I got you. You know, show some support. Matter of fact, this next deal we actually going out tomorrow to look at properties. Y'all gonna be once we lock one down. I'll put you down. Please, and, 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 right, and say attorneys. Buckhead off. I got you. So it's been a pleasure. Kiana, thank you for coming and blessing the show. Made that conversation. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, have a good day. Yes. We'll see y'all next time.